in state and federal government, and I'll just name some of, a few of some of the things that he's done in his career. Um, he was appointed by Governor Pollock in January as Secretary of Commerce and Trade. Um, he's also served as De Deputy Secretary for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, he served as a Commissioner of the Virginia Department of Social Services and Deputy Chief of Staff to Virginia Governor Mark Warner. Um, he served in the Treasury Department and many, many other positions as well. Um, he um, received his bachelor's degree from Hampton, Sydney, and attended Oxford University in England on a Rhodes Scholarship, uh, and also received his Juris Doctorate degree from the University of Virginia. So, Secretary Jones.
chat with you about. So Defense Department is one, Walmart is two, Fairfax County Public Schools is three. Huntington and Ingalls, which is a defense contract, is four. Centera is five, Food Line is six, the post office is seven. The county of Fairfax is eight. HCA is nine. And the Department of Homeland Defense is ten. So by my count, one, two, three, four, five, six of our largest, six of the top ten employers in the state are either in the public sector or they're public sector contractor. Right? So that could be a fluke. Let's just take a look at the next ten and see if that's uh, consistent. Number 11, Prince William County Public Schools. Number 12, Capital One. Number 13, Virginia Beach Public Schools. Number 14, Anova. Number 15, Loudoun County Public Schools. 16, UVA. 17, Target. 18, VCU. 19, the U.S. Department of Commerce. And 20, Lowe's. By my count, 13 of the top 20 employers in the state, either public sector or public sector contractors. It's football season. I love football. Now, I will confess, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. Yes. Yes. There are only four of us left. Because if we 
don't. And if we don't take on this challenge as a burning platform, we are going to wake up one day as the government continues to shrink, particularly the federal government. And boy, this is not going to be the envy of the rest of the country. So let me suggest to you five areas that we need to continue to build on the work that's already been done. The first area is infrastructure. And in the infrastructure area, yes, we are talking about roads, no question about it. But just as importantly, we're talking about broadband expansion in rural Virginia. 25% is the number in most rural parts of the state that is the maximum broadband penetration as we now speak. That's the maximum in most of our rural areas. Hard to attract businesses, hard to launch businesses, hard to keep businesses, you can't even use the internet in that county or that town. <coughs> energy. So we, we have an energy commission at work right now. I've gained a very, very newfound respect for the role that our very, very competitive electricity prices play in helping to attract and keep businesses. It is crucial. So as we think about the energy plans for the state, we have got to keep our energy prices low and competitive, which is where they are now. We are, we are very fortunate that the Commonwealth has one of the most competitive uh, energy uh, cost models in the country, but we've got to keep it there. So yes, we have to grow all parts of our energy portfolio, but we got to do it in a way that keeps our prices competitive or we're going to hurt our job. And yes, the poor people in Dallas have to be hitting on all these cities. And we got work to do in those areas now. So infrastructure. There's a theme we've got to do the poor people. Second B, workforce development. Uh, and if I were doing this in order of importance, I would put workforce development as number one. It's not a uh, prospect that I've talked to hasn't said to me that the workforce is their most important consideration. Yes, our incentives matter. Yes, we need to keep competitive on that. But at the end of the day, it's all about how good we are in producing the talented workforce at business speed that our businesses are asking for. So here's some more data for Conservative estimates right now suggest that in the next 10 years, Virginia will generate about 500,000 new jobs. So we'll need 500,000 newly qualified workers. And even more importantly, about 930,000 replacement jobs. People retiring, people moving on. 1.4 million dollars. 1.4 million jobs in the next 10 years, we're going to need qualified, ready to work workers. Will we get them all from graduates of our four year institutions? Nope. Will we get them all from graduates of our four year institutions and graduates of our community colleges? Nope. We will get them from those combined with a really enhanced effort to provide certifications and licenses and apprenticeships of people who don't go on to get their associates, who don't go on to get their bachelors, but who can get great jobs at great wages with the right competencies that are exhibited by the right certifications and licenses. So yesterday we announced an executive order on workforce development. That was where we were focusing. Get us 50,000 more STEM age certifications and licensures. This is probably going to be heresy, but telling folks, telling young folks that they will not be able to have a meaningful career, a meaningful, um, well paying job without going to get a four year degree. Is doing them a disservice. That 
that is one path, and we ought to be great at it. But we also have to be great at that path that doesn't require either a two-year or four-year degree. Our estimates, that 1.4 billion jobs, at least half, will not require a four-year college degree. So we are attempting to, if you will, up our game when it comes to licensures, certifications, apprenticeships for these jobs for which workers are needed right now. One of the most common asks that I have is, can you find me welders right now? And I'll pay them $70,000. So I put my resume in several places. <laughs>
have to be able to aggressively compete for those. We work with Chesterfield, we work with the General Assembly, we work with a host of folks within the, the uh, executive branch to compete for that business. And we had to compete. We had, in fact, we just got back from China uh, viewing their operations. Uh, I will tell you the scale was even greater than I had imagined. It, it's going to be a transformative enterprise uh, on the scene. But we've got to do that in the key areas. Those areas where the jobs are in growth mode and the wages are good. And we've got the assets. At the end of the day, and I'll get out of Dodge, right, because I probably overstayed the wall. Uh, we got to focus on all five of those areas, but the key ingredient will be teamwork. And I know it sounds trite, but that Chinese firm that I mentioned that is the largest Chinese investment in the States, when I asked the CEO, tell me which of the incentives was the deal sealer what did we do to put us over the top? I expected him to talk about the financial incentives. Without pause, he looked at me and he said, it was your team. He said, you put a team on the field that at the end of the day, we felt confident that if we just worked with them, we could solve every problem in their lives. That was. That's what at the end of the day made us think this is the place to team is still the most important ingredient for economic growth. So that's where we all come in. The invitation to us that I've seen in eight months is to put aside politics, to put aside uh, our particular idiosyncrasies, focus on jobs and wages for our folks, together to win every time. We won't win every time, but I think if we do that, we'll win nine out of ten because we have we have advantages that others just don't have. So I'm grateful uh, to you for allowing me to be with you and I'll try to answer some questions for you from you. Thank you very much. Um, have you heard about Virginia Tech's project that they're working on with mobile units for deployment of broadband into the rural areas? Yeah. Are you a supporter of that? I am a they reached out to me um, to see if maybe our county is interested in being the test. I am. I, I will tell you that I wouldn't call myself an expert uh, on what they're doing. I was out there uh, about a month ago and they, uh, they demonstrated for me. But yeah, I mean, I, again, I think. We've got to try, the, the issue becomes what's the business model for uh, broadband penetration in our rural areas. And so we've got to try some stuff. And this, I think, is well worth our trying. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I think I can give you Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I just want to go back to your ranking of your five top so if I had to rank them, now you're putting me on the spot. Uh, talent would probably be talent. Yeah, workforce development. Uh, but when I said talent, it's, it's not only workforce development, it's you know, like having a brand that we're attracting talent to the state as well. Well, I, I, I raise that one because I think it's a very important one, I think, in economic development and what we do every day. And that is in raising the, the, uh, the quality of an employee that you're going to need to have a successful business to provide those services. And I think you talked about a team, and I think the team that I looked at is how do we bring people together to recognize if we don't start off on the right start, we usually won't have those folks that are there. And one of the things I know the governor has, has embraced just recently by recognizing that if we don't educate all of our children, we will not be able to have them provide. And that's a very important economic piece because bringing folks here, we want to know that we're not going to waste any talent and that we are here to make our economy better. Yeah, no question. Ta talent is the, it's the secret sauce. 
I, I was having lunch with the president of Unilever, the North Americans, uh, the North American operation recently. They have the Lipton tea plant down in Suffolk, if you've ever seen it. It's, a, it's an incredible plant. I mean, it's, it's highly automated. But he said to me, he goes, I'm going to invest $5 billion in the U.S. in the next three years. And I looked at him and I said, so how can Virginia get $5 billion of that? Right? And he looks at me and he goes, that was easy. You show me that you got the workforce that can do the work for my plans. And by the way, it is definitely the technical stuff, right? We've got to have those competencies, but it's also the intangibles, it's attitude, right? It's being able to pass the drug test, right? It's hustle, right? So as we are uh, a attempting to impart secrets of success mm. to our next generation of contributors to our society. We've got to prepare them technically, but we've also got to prepare them, and this is a tougher job, attitude. Okay. Right? Uh, and that's all of our job. That's the invitation for all of us. We cannot let that go to someone else. That we have to take away. Penny Gross, Fairfax County. You know what I'm going to ask probably about, probably. Workforce development, right? Yes, workforce development. Um, I also chair the North Virginia Regional Commission. And as you know, we are working on workforce development, trying to figure out how to make that um, a, a real, uh, uh, really just make it our uh, biggest focus in the, in, with, with the region. And so I'd like you to talk a little bit, if you would, about the regional cooperation. And we're working hard on it in Northern Virginia. We need the Commonwealth to be a partner in that. And we're also looking at how we have um, those uh, good jobs but filled with people who are qualified with the technical education. So could you expand a little bit in your comments also about um, not the need for a four-year college degree, because as good as we are in, in uh, Virginia, and as proud as we are of all of our education, higher edu uh, institutes of higher education, we are finding that the kids who are coming out of high school now are the ones who would sometimes have the best technical qualifications, because they're going to the academies in our, in our high schools, and they're getting prepared for the workforce. So would you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, on the regional cooperation and collaboration part, um, it, it is, you know, it's essential for us to, this goes back to the teamwork, it's essential for us to uh, be a high-functioning team if we're going to be successful with this. You know, the, the public workforce system that we have now is we have 24 different programs. Um, they span eight or nine state agencies, four different uh, secretariats. We spend $364 million a year. 60% of that is funded from the federal government, 37% is funded by the state, and about 3% uh, is funded at the local level. Um, and each one of the programs has a particular target audience, right? And so when you get that stuff, Right? When you get laid in your in your in your backyard, these resources, but these resources with all of these uh, different strings attached, the way the only way you can maximize it is to figure out how to come together as a region and try to have one voice on what the priorities are. Because if you're not aligned, you would just have multiple silos. What we're going to try to do is to impose the same performance metrics on all programs as a vehicle to align what people are trying to do. So no matter what population, what adult population you're working with, we're going to try to hold folks accountable for five key performance measures. That is, you know, did you get the credential? you had an impact on wages, right? what is the return on investment? So what's the cost that we're investing uh, versus what the, uh, what the production is? Uh, frankly, are we helping people to get additional uh, wage growth? Those are the kinds of things that we're, we're going to be uh, looking at. So teamwork, and I'll tell you, uh, 
based on what I've seen, and I won't, I won't uh, suggest that I've seen everything across the state, but the places that seem to uh, have the best functioning teams in the workforce area right now, today as we speak, are Hampton Roads and the Shenandoah Valley. Not Northern Virginia. Yeah, but we're not. Yep, yep. And so we want to work with you. And however we can be helpful. I was just up there this morning. They, they almost drew me out of there because I told them they had to be strong as a team. They didn't want to hear that. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, the second part of your question was the technical education. Yeah, I, look. Um, we need more high school students coming out, either already or close to having a market-driven certification or licensure. There are um, collaborations in particular with the community colleges that can pull that off. And we need our businesses to hire our students as they do. We need our businesses to have apprenticeships. There are great apprenticeships in this state. Most of them tend to be in the manufacturing space. I've not seen a sector where an apprenticeship can't add that. We need more apprenticeships. One last question. Thank you. Uh, for his speech, I'll say, uh, Ken Reed with Loudoun County. Uh, I don't know if this is new or not, but uh, at least in our county, hit with a, uh, a series of efforts by the state of Maryland to lure away our businesses. Uh, and I'm wondering if you're seeing this statewide with other states putting in big bucks to lure business out of Virginia. Okay, uh, it's, uh, I find it a little unsettling, uh, personally. Uh, maybe this is just the way it's always been. Um, yeah, so please let me know, is Maryland the number one culprit or the other culprits? I hope Virginia is the number one culprit. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather see the governor bring in new business from overseas and steal it from another state. But anyway, we'll get it from everywhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I said to somebody, this business of luring businesses to your state is a contact sport. Right? We are competing against other states and other countries. And as far as I'm concerned, game on, Amen. right? And we need to step up because I promise you, uh, they won't be saying, that's all right, Virginia's another state. I'm not gonna take it from Virginia, I'll take it from Mexico. No, they're going after our businesses hard. Look, as long as it's fair play, we'll win. We'll win nine out of 10 years. We've got a better story. Uh, but to answer your question, that's not me. This has been, there's a reason why uh, BMW located south of us. Mississippi put more money on the table, or South Carolina put more money on the table, right? Uh, and that's what's going on all over the place. We have to be willing to compete, play fair, tell the Virginia story, aggressively go up. We were in Chicago not too long ago, and you know what we were doing? Talking to businesses about how attractive this is as a place. Now, we were also in China and England, and we're going to be in Japan and South Korea and Hong Kong telling that same story. The global business marketplace is just that. It's a global business marketplace. So the competitive landscape is not just the country.